lengths of one kilometer and 300 meters. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. When, when I was a child and we had silkworms, the silk was golden. Yep, because they ate any leaves. No, only, 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 ate, only ate mulberry okay. leaves. Okay. Maybe yeah. a different variety of worm or something, yeah, but definitely maybe. always golden. Yeah, there's different uh, silkworms, yeah. and there's uh, some, I don't know, I think it's three or four different wild silkworms in India. Yeah, so maybe that's a, a yeah. reason. Yeah. yeah. If you feed them beetroot leaves, you get red silk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in our class, we grade we got some silkworms in our I want to they, take they had started yeah. spinning their cocoons and um, they, they, most of them lived except a couple of them didn't because um, some kids were poking them. Yeah. But um, a few of them survived and um, no, after the so worms had come out, the people who were best behaved were to keep the cocoons and I got one. Yeah. And I, um, and I still, I had it till last year, but last year in about um, November, um, I got there was a I accidentally dropped it in the garden when I found it there was like six termites in it. Oh, oh. Yeah. well but it was a lovely story yeah. and you were lucky that you, you got to keep it for such yeah. a long time. It was it's, it's, it's so sad. Yes, yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah, so any, any more questions? Um, I'm wondering if they, if anybody has worked out how to um, do the silk, you know, like after the worms have finished with it or... <laughs> How, how yeah. not to kill the worms? Yeah. They yeah. The thing, the thing is that they have, if they, if they come out and live their life as a silkworm and they become a beautiful butterfly, then they have to break through mm. that cocoon. Mm. And when you break through that cocoon, that's when you break the threads. Mm. And that's why they, wow. they, they do yeah. it before when they're still alive. Yeah. So, so or you will end course, up with, yeah. with millions of, of yeah. threads this long. Yeah. yeah. So it's the name. There is a name for that. It's like raw silk or something, but they use a different name, and they do make stuff out of it. Oh yeah, yeah. Not so not. yeah. So the raw silk yeah. is a shorter length of silk, uh, and yeah. uh, and you would say a lesser quality in a way. But I love the raw silk to work with that because it, I do a lot of silk painting, and it mm. takes the dyes really, really beautifully. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I have. I took a copy. Uh, I came, came across these little envelopes uh, somewhere, so I took a copy and you can cut it out and, and you can go home and you can make your own little envelopes. So if you want to do that, you can, you're can. you welcome to take a copy. Um, I also uh, yeah, just want to announce that the biodynamic uh, organization up here is having their next uh, meeting on the 20th. I've got to put my glasses on before, before I tell any lies. Okay. The 19th of August. Uh, yeah, so this is about market far uh, market garden farming, biodynamically, and uh, and it's a beautiful property. It's up near Raven's Hope. And uh, they will talk a little bit about the calendar, which we use for uh, uh, guidance to when we plant and what we... Uh, when we do different things, and then uh, they will talk about the soil food web. During that lunch break, all the seeds will be available um, for the members of, of the biodynamics. But it's a really good day if you want to get just a, a little idea about what the biodynamic people do. That's a, a, a great day. Um, okay, I got another book here that I think will be nice to, for you to have a little look at. I call it Junk Yards and Beautiful Gardens. So because we have been house-sitting and farm-sitting for six years, we had heaps of opportunities to roam around all these big big uh, properties, finding things. And oh, I thought, well, you could use that table tennis uh, table there for something in the garden. You would turn it upside down on an old bed. You would turn that upside down and the beans would grow or trellises and but when you are farm sitting or house sitting for your friends or for whoever you can't just go in and change the whole farm around and then, then when they come home whew, they have a complete permaculture set up with, with everything in order but that's not the farm they left so, so what I did because I got really frustrated and it was one year there was that many 
so much material, building materials that I just couldn't handle it. So what I said, what I did, I just took photo of it, and this is what this book is all about. So I took photos of all the stuff, and then I wrote in the book, you can use that for this. And then, then I made mock maps of the property. This is where I'm going to put it, right there where there's nothing growing. That's where the banana circle is going to be. So, our friend came home and I finished the book. And uh, I was so pleased with myself because I had changed the whole property in this book. Yeah. I was so pleased with myself. Uh -huh. And it was not even hard work. I didn't have to carry anything because it, it was just shifted on the, on the piece of paper. And it really gave me a huge satisfaction. So I waited until my friend had been home for a week, and then I said to her, I've written a book about the property. She says, that sounds interesting. Yes, it is. It's very interesting. So would you, would you like to have a lend of it? So, so she had a read through, and I think it was another week, and then she said, okay, let's get started. Wow. And that's what we did. And Yay. we just worked hard. Yeah. And we changed so many things on that farm. It was it was really interesting. It was like a, a further step, yeah, than just yeah. So you're welcome to come and have a look. I also bought um, the newsletter for the biodynamics. They call the the newsletter for Hufland Dam, and that's what they do most of the time. They run the that viability testing. Viability test. We actually ask on the passport uh, how. How is the viability? So a viability test is done. You put 10 seeds in the ground and you count how many uh, germinates. So if 10 seeds germinate, you've got 100%. If eight seeds germinate, you've got 80% viability. And I use, and this, this viability sheet here also becomes a bit of a, a, a manual for your garden. So I, every time I do a, a, a big uh, sowing session, then I just write all the seeds, Names down the numbers if they got numbers, say like from Coranda seat saver slash two hundred and forty eight. And then every day, in the beginning at least, I go out and see how the little darlings are going. And once they start sprouting, yeah, I'm so excited. So I write eight seeds and then oh only eight. Oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So and then you can and then you will write a few comments and then you might write, whoops, we got flooded. So we lost all the seeds, all the seedlings. So this is how is a little worksheet for you, so mm -hmm. please take one if you would like to. Um, yeah, I think that's that's about it. Uh, the seeds that were in Mariba, I can just explain that the different groups meet at different times. So the next Mariba seed saver is on the, uh, the the 9th of September, and it's on a beautiful property. Um, just uh, this is Maria and, and Douglas who have just moved into this property. However, they have had access to it, so over the last eight, ten months, they have been planting. So there's no, there's no house, uh, and there's no toilets, and they hope to have a bit of power in by the time of September. But if not, we'll just bring gas stoves, and uh, we'll, we'll play it from there. Um, but it's, it will be a really, really good opportunity to see how people, these people have started the gardens, and, and how they grow it, and... and yeah, how they have planned out the whole property. Um, that's that's about it. Um, yes, <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> Soil testing. Yes. Yeah. Where do I get it from? Well, the, 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 the pH value that I tested for. Yeah, yeah I found yes. it. And you just ask for a, a pH test mm -hmm. kit. Yeah. It's a little bit more complicated, that's why I haven't done it yet, um, but this week I'm going to check it out because I can see from this fruit trees that's on the farm that they're not happy, they're lacking a lot of different minerals. Yeah, And that's another thing, you could have minerals in the ground, but the plant is not able to absorb it, so that's uh, another thing. Yes, so that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen, and young kids and people. Um, yeah, any more questions, I'm happy to um, answer them during the lunch break. Come up and have a look at, at what I do. And um, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about your book? Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah I, always, I always keep forgetting that I've written a book. <laughs> yeah, and um, when we... <laughs> When I had the book launch and I did a little sort of a talk and I finished, 
And then, then as one of my friends said, oh, you forgot to say anything about the book. <laughs> you actually got it here for sale today. <laughs> so I excused myself, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, so it's called From My Heart because it is about our, our life, me and Peter, what we've been doing. Uh, there's a little bit about healing, about uh, traveling, a lot about traveling. There's something about things that we shouldn't have done, but we did it. <laughs> so that's why we're still here. So there's something about a dead snake in Tasmania. Uh, there's something about Peter being bitten by bull ants and how we managed to, to uh, yeah, get his foot back in order, not having to go to hospital or anything. You fix it out there in the bush, it's all in the book. So, yeah, uh, $20 a copy. And I'm writing my next book, which will be a garden book. It will not be so much about digging a hole in the ground, measure it out like 10 centimeter, put a seed in, it will never come up, it's too deep. So that's what, not what the book is all about. But this book is about connecting. It's about connecting to your plants, to connect to Mother Earth and the planets, and how to community, uh, communicate with nature and the nature spirits. So, and how to work together. Thank you. Thanks, Ola.